related to great word problems. Everybody's favorite. These can get a little intense sometimes. I want to break this up into three separate videos. Level one, level two, level three. Level one, basic, easy problems. They give us the equation, give us the symbols. You're basically just practicing, taking the derivative, practicing with the notation, and practice plugging stuff in. So level one, no big deal. Level two, they give us word problems, and you need to come up with the symbols all by yourself and then turn it into a level one problem and then do what we're doing here. Level three, they give us a word problem. You're going to come up with everything by yourself, but then you're going to run into variable issues that you must have, have to handle first, which I'm going to show you how to do. And then you can eventually turn it into a level two and a level three pro or a level one problem and go to work on that. All right, just notation wise, if I give you an equation and I tell you to find the derivative with respect to x, okay, that's how x's and y's are related to each other. Like, you know, slope, right? You change a y over change an x, you go up five over four, up seven over 10, right? It's how y's and x's are changing in relationship to each other. With respect to time, I don't care about how they're changing in relationship to each other. I wanna know how fast the y's are changing with respect to time. I wanna know how fast the x are changing all by themselves with respect to time. Like how fast, if somebody's like running up a mountain, how fast vertically are they changing just on that? How fast horizontally are they changing just on that? So you're just gonna break it up and two separate components there, okay? So just notation-wise, let's practice this. If I wanna find the derivative with respect to x, <clears throat> that's what we've been doing. You're gonna go for y. Now remember what I told you before, you're gonna take a derivative, but if you take the derivative of y's in it, you tag on a y prime or a dy dx. So I'm gonna tag on a dy dx here. And if you take the derivative of that, you're gonna get, on um, my fault, it's gonna be a minus 12x cubed. And then here's the thing. So what I'm doing here, I'm tagging on a dx, over dx and the derivative of that right hand side is equal to zero. So I just want to point out something here that these top variables will always match. If you're doing the derivative of y's, that's going to be a dy. If you're doing the derivative of x's, that's going to be a dx. So that top variable will always match your variable that you're doing the derivative of. And then when it says with respect to x, that's going to be your bottom variable. Now, that's where we're going to stop right now. I can solve that for the dy dx. I'm not, I just want to show you notation here, okay? Now, if I turn around through the same equation, say find the derivative with respect to time, here's what you're about to do. You're going to go for y. You're going to tag on this time a dy dt. And then you're going to go minus 12x cubed. And this time you're doing the derivative of x's with respect to time. So you're going to tag on a dx dt. If you're doing the derivative of r's with respect to time, tag on a dr dt. You're doing the derivative of v's with respect to time, tag on a dv dt. So make the top letters match. And then this bottom letter, everything in this section with this word problems are gonna be DTs on the bottom. So we can no longer use the shorthand notation as Y prime, because Y prime only means DY DX. So you have to tag on the DY DT, the DX DT, the DR DT, the DV DT, whatever word problem that we're working with, you gotta tag those on, because everything is with respect to time. And that's just gonna be, <laughs> and what those symbols are gonna represent is how fast that particular thing is changing. That's it, how fast it's going, like a velocity. So how fast you're moving horizontally, you know, lateral quickness, how fast you're moving up and down, jumping up and down like a bunny rabbit, right? How fast, you know, if you're filling up a, a, a glass with like Coca-Cola, how fast is that Coca-Cola flowing into that glass or how fast is that volume of that cylinder changing there? So that's gonna be the DVDT is how fast the volume is changing. DXDT is how fast the X's are changing. The DRDT is how fast the radius is changing. So that's what those symbols mean with respect to time is how fast those things are changing. Um, I remember Barry Sanders was like the greatest running back of all time and his lateral quickness. It wasn't his like dead on speed, like a track runner, just straight from one distance, one spot to another spot. His lateral quickness and his ability to make people miss and he just juked people left and right. Um, and it, it was amazing. If you could just Google Google him and watch some of his runs, his lateral quickness was saying that's more like a DXDT. Um, I was watching a sports science show one time and they had like uh, this, this these coats defensive linemen getting to the quarterback in like an average of like 2.3 seconds and they zoomed in on the, this 300 pound lineman's ankle when he was like shoving people around and like getting to the quarterback and they zoomed in on his ankle and they they had on there they didn't really go into the details they just kind of wow you with the numbers and say how fast stuff is going but when they zoomed in on his ankle 
they actually had a little angle uh, marker, like the little arc, and they had like a D theta DT in there. And they said like how fast his ankle was like near the ground and would pounce up and like just pounce on that quarterback right there. So it was, it was kind of interesting to see there when they do all those numbers and stuff like that, you know, home runs and everything like that. They figure out the actual distances. It's just different ways of looking at things right there. So it's pretty exciting stuff. Now this is just calc one. You could do even more stuff with this when you get the calculus three in college, like multivariable calculus, because you can have more things changing. Um, so we have to give you some information and then some information we won't know there. Um, but let's just practice some level one problems, okay? Level one, they straight up give us everything that we need, and we just practice taking the derivative with respect to time and then plugging in some info. That's it. So let's just go through this quickly. So now I'm going to take the derivative of everything with respect to time. They give us this info. So I'm going to go dy dt equals 2x by just the derivative of x's with respect to time. So you got to tag on the dx dt. The derivative of that 7 is zero, so there's my derivative. And now I can use this derivative because I'm gonna use this same equation for both of these first two problems. So I can use that derivative and just plug stuff into that guy right there. So for this first part, we wanna find the dy dt, but they gave us x is equal to three. So the dy dt is going to equal, I'm gonna take the three, plug it in there for the x. And they also gave us that the dx dt was equal to five. We're not doing with any units yet, so don't worry about that. Just practice the derivatives, practice the notation. Not that big of a deal. So then you're going to get six times five. You're going to get 30 for that. And when they start giving us units, we'll start doing units in the, the next video and then on the actual word problems. And then they could also just make us do algebra, right? Here they're going to find the dx dt. So I don't know what that one is, but we do know the x is seven and the dy dt is equal to 10. So I can just start plugging stuff in. Like that. And then to solve this for the dxdt, it's just like a variable. That's 14, and then you're going to go 10 divided by 14. And then 10 over 14 is going to reduce to 5 over 7. There's your dxdt. <clears throat> so that's how fast just the y's are changing. That's how fast just the x's are changing. And then with respect to time, um, so if we put units attached there, it might be like inches per second, centimeters per second, you know, how fast it's going up, how fast it's going right or left. If you get a positive number, that means it's going up, it's increasing. If you get a negative number, it's going down, it's decreasing. So if it's, you're talking about the x of this positive, it means the thing is going to the right. If the dx and t is negative, that means it's decreasing, going to the left. And, you know, so we can use those signs to get, figure out whether things are getting uh, larger or smaller there. And I figured it'd be good practice for us to throw in a trig problem. Always good to practice that. So um, here we want to, given we're given that the d theta dt is equal to something in power four is there. So if I just take the derivative with respect to time, we're going to go dy dt. Derivative of sine of an angle is going to be cosine of that angle. Leave that angle alone. But then remember, you got times by the derivative of that angle. But you just did the derivative of thetas with respect to time. So that means we must plug in a d theta dt. And then after you take a derivative, notice that you, what we always do. We always take the derivative first. And then we plug in all of our information. You don't plug in the information too soon. You always take the derivative first. Then you plug in all your givens there. So we'll plug in pi over 4 for the theta. So that's three power four. And then the d theta dt is just gonna be two. So then the cosine of power four, we know is radical two over two, but you're in quadrant two, cosine is negative in quadrant two. So this three carries down, you have that, you have the two, the twos cancel. And so you're gonna get a negative three radical two for the dy dt. So that's the level one stuff. And then what I also included here for you are just some formulas that, just some geometry formulas that we might have to use throughout the homework. Get the air of a circle, volume of a sphere, volume of a cone, surface area of a cube. If you come across something else, just, you know, look that up yourself there and use that formula. Typically, we will give you the geometry formulas like on a testing situation and typically they give us those geometry formulas on an actual AP test. There's some of the basic ones they don't quite give us, so we do want to be familiar with those, but most of the time we're given that information. If I assess you over these, which I will, uh, I'll, I'll pro um, I'm going to go ahead and give you those geometry forms so you don't have to worry about memorizing those. So there we go. That's level one. Go to the next video, watch that level two stuff there. We'll start working with some word problems.